Registered representatives offer securities through Securities America, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Financial advisors offer advisory services through Securities America Advisors, Inc. Forest Hills Financial, Inc. and Securities America are separate entities. This is the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steindler. Good morning and welcome to the Keeping Your Money Show. This is Bart Steindler. I'm joined in the studio this morning by Shannon Simon. How you doing, Shannon? I'm doing great, Bart. I'm glad to be back. I know it's been a little while, but my schedule's taking me in other directions. So yeah, glad she, to be back here early Saturday morning. So. That's right. Shannon is uh, an advisor with Forest Hills Financial, but he also has uh, accounts that he works with in what Louisiana and Texas. Yeah, I've got a lot of states that I that I go to, but my family's from Louisiana, so I spend a little bit of time down there with work related. And Texas is another state that's uh, a pretty big. Uh, place for me to visit as well so i think a lot of people uh that you know listen to this show um we are a local company here in grand rapids michigan but i, I think a lot of people would be surprised of how many states we actually right. do business in yeah we reach out a little bit further than just michigan and i think we what we also discount sometimes too is the, the following that we have on podcasts through itunes where people actually hear us in in other areas and at their leisure and not always just here on Saturday morning. So those that are here listening, thank you very much for uh, showing up. And we'll give a shout out to your wife, Bart, because I know that she listens every weekend. We were having that conversation. She doesn't miss it. So thank you, Kathy, for being there, too. That's so. right. And when we're on the road, she'll uh, she'll put on um, on her phone. She picks it up with iHeartRadio, yep. and she turns into WBBL. But other people I know that are out of town also follow us on iTunes, mm-hmm. uh, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. And if you'd like to get a hold of us, uh, you can call us at one 988 money That's one 888 or info at dot com. Jamie Westenbarger, who is not with us today, will uh, answer all of those calls that, and emails that come to us. Okay. So uh, what we do here on the Keeping Your Money show, if you're new, is we pick three or four different topics that could be of interest to people who are interested in saving for retirement, planning for retirement, and just topics that will help you on that road to a more secure retirement. We have a couple things we're going to talk about today. One is about health care costs and what has been happening to those costs and who's paying them. We're also going to talk about Social Security benefits and the taxing um, implication of that. We're going to talk about what's changed in Social Security disability as far as how many people are applying for it. And then uh, we're going to be joined by David Bennett from the David Bennett Company. And uh, David is the founder, of course, and the principal. And he talks about improving organizations and he does consulting work to help achieve that okay so shannon you brought in brought our attention to this article about the health insurance costs yeah and i think the the key thing is is that uh, i mean everybody i say everybody i can't blanket it but most everybody would like to have health insurance and there's it's in the news pretty regularly but one of the key things that, that I hear a lot of people talk about is that the increased cost of health insurance and what they're saying in this article, it says you'll be shocked at how much health insurance costs for a family of four. And they're saying that over the last couple of years, that's increased. Now, this is the sad part that it's increased at the lowest rate in the past decades. And they're saying that the, the end result is that the total cost for a typical family of four insured and this is by the most common health plan offered by employers averages twenty eight thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars a year according to the milliman medical index now i i don't know a whole lot about the milliman 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 medical index but that's the baseline of this article that's what they use i do know they have a difficult name to pronounce for me they do yes. might not be for you but it is for <laughs> me so but yeah so the the key point is is twenty eight thousand one hundred sixty six dollars a year and that's up from 2010 where the average cost uh, the average cost cost twenty thousand dollars and then just two years ago it was twenty thousand uh, twenty five thousand five hundred and that includes deductibles 
and out-of-pocket expenses. So just as a just as a synopsis that you have for health insurance, and most everybody knows this, but I'll kind of touch on it again, but you have the cost of your premiums, and then on top of the premiums, you're going to have your deductibles, and then once you've met deductibles, you have coinsurance or copays. So in this article, they're referencing to that, that the, the I guess the thing that most people don't realize is if you're imp- working for an employer, and the, of that $28,166 in annual cost, a good part of that burden is picked up by the employer, your, the employer that you work for. For those of you like me and most of the people in our office are self-employed, then if you're having that health insurance, you're paying both sides of that. You're paying all of the premiums as well as the deductibles if you have those in a given year. So one of the things that really struck me as interesting in this article is, one, that the, the rate of growth is going down, but the total cost is still going up. Correct. And that your employer, if it's an employee plan, is mm-hmm. bearing the largest part of that cost. Correct. Okay. So a lot of people have been critical of the fact that wages have been stagnant in the country for, you know, the last eight, 10 mm-hmm. years. They're starting to pick up now because, uh, you know, there's there's more demand for employees and our right. employment rates a lot, unemployment rates a lot lower. But I think what people have failed to realize is that it's actually cost your employer more to employ you because mm-hmm. the cost of your health insurance keeps going up. Right. So if we can address that cost of health insurance as a country and help get that down, mm-hmm. it is likely that employers are going to be more willing to put some of that money back into higher wages. Right. And in this article, one of the things that was surprising to me was the actual average annual cost that they reference, that the insurance cost has gone up about 4.5% per year year over year so that's kind of surprising that when you think about it if an employer was going to give you a pay raise well they've already had a four and a half percent cost on the health insurance side of things plus your compensation so i i don't know if every company does this but i know a lot of the larger companies do that at the end of the year they will share a benefits package or compensation package and within that, it will sh- break down all the, the additional benefits above and beyond the wages. And what I found in some of those uh, compensation package reviews uh, is that sometimes it's 50 or 60 percent higher above your average wage. If you make $10 an hour, sometimes it's 15 or $16 an hour. It costs your employer to employ you. That includes those benefits of vacations, health insurance, 401k contributions if they match and those types of things so it's really just looking at that and i think the the hard part is is as an employer they're trying to increase benefits to keep people there and they have to sacrifice sometimes the wage increases as well Mm -hmm. a lot of times uh people will call up and and come in for a consultation and i can think of um two occasions the last couple weeks both of them were uh you know, successful women that were looking at retiring early mm-hmm. and, and wanted us to start working out a plan for them. And one of the one of the issues was what about health insurance, the right. cost of health insurance, because the companies they are with are are paying the majority of the cost of their health care. But if they decide to retire early, you know, there's that gap between when mm-hmm. they're going to get Medicare at 65 Correct. and the age that they retire at. How do you work that into into their plan? And, and, you know, how important is it for them to consider that cost in retiring early? Well, and it's huge. And I think the, the unknown is, uh, well, you've got some fixed costs with insurance. So if you're going to be self-employed or you're transitioning or you're in retirement, It's going to an insurance professional that can provide you a quote. You can get it from the the exchange that that people talk about is available. You can work with individual insurance agents. And what I've found is somewhere between $500 and $1,000 a month in the people that I've talked to is their cost of insurance. And there's different types of plans. There's gold plans, and I think you can list out like three or four different 
uh, types. If you're not eligible for any subsidies, your cost is about 500 to a thousand dollars. So think about that in terms of your cost of insurance, if you're single and it's $500 a month, that's $6,000 a year that you have just in your cost of premiums. Now, the sad part is, is that coverage is not going to be, at least what I've seen, doesn't compare to what your employer has provided. So you have a little bit less coverage. You have a higher out-of-pocket expense. So in some of those deductibles in a gold plan is like $13,000. So you could feasibly or potentially have $18,000 in expenses for health insurance before anything's paid for. So with that, I think the, the, the question really coming back to that part of it is, is you have to do your research before you make a decision to say, I'm gonna go unemployed or self-employment, or I'm gonna retire early. You gotta figure out how do you bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. And then you gotta pay for that some way, shape or form. Cause a lot of people just think about their income expenses as it relates to their income and expenses while they're working. So how about uh, that you're budgeting for the premiums? Yes. And besides budgeting for the premiums, you also have an emergency fund set Correct. aside in case you do have a medical event that is going to, you know, set you back twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, and that that goes back to while you're employed, if you're eligible to contribute to an HSA, a health savings account, mm -hmm. then do that now so you can put the money away. But you have to plan for this as an expense that's not calculated in your current living expenses because it's an added uh, expense even when you transition into Medicare, once you're eligible for that, there's an expense for that as well. And when, when people are coming in and, and you know, starting to address this conversation with you, I know in my experience it's been that a lot of times they're, they haven't really put the numbers to this and they don't really have an idea on, you know, what the costs are and they don't, a lot of times they just don't think about it. Right. And that's what I found most times happens. They just haven't thought about it. Okay. And it's like, how do you, how do you plan for it? And that's, working with a professional, someone that's an advisor that can help you select uh, or work with someone that can select the best plan for your situation and then plan for your income distribution around that. Excellent. Excellent topic, Shannon. Thanks for bringing that uh, to our attention. Uh, Shannon will be right back with us and we are going to talk about some of the taxation things you need to understand regarding Social Security benefits on the Keeping Your Money Show.